Today I'll be breaking down verse 1 of the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. Check it out. Yeah. I'm inspired. Yeah. I'm inspired. Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumed Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy. I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. And I'm here today to do a breakdown of Lao Tzu's amazing text, the Tao Te Ching. So first of all, it's important to understand this came from like 400 BC in ancient China. Okay, so these are all translations. All of these are just translations that we have. So the Tao can be loosely translated towards the way or the path or even I like to think of it as this underlying substrate, right? This flow. It's not synonymous with flow state, but I can definitely see through the lens of someone who's a specialist in the flow state, I can see where the Tao and the flow coincide. If you've ever seen the movie Star Wars, they talk about the force, right? This is kind of one of those ways to understand it. Of course, that's a paradox, but again, this text is paradoxical. It really unfolds itself as you start reading. Let me read my version first and I'll give you another understanding of it. So the way that can be articulately described is not the unchanging way. The name that can be said out loud is not the unchanging name. With your mouth unopened and things left undefined, you stand at the beginning of the universe, make definitions and you are the measure of all creation. Thus, being forever without desire, you look deeply into the transcendent. By constantly harboring desire, your best vision is beset by all the things around you. These two enter the world alike, but their names are different. Alike, they are called profound and remote. Profound and remote, and again, more so. This is the gate to all mysteries, okay? Let me read this first understanding, okay? The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The name that can be named is not the eternal name. Okay, the nameless is the beginning of heaven and earth. Some Sometimes the translation says eternally real as well. The named is the mother of 10,000 things. Ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. These two spring from the same source, but different in name, this appears as darkness. Darkness within darkness. The gate to all mystery or understanding in some translations. Let's break this bad boy down because this is what I'm choosing to do with this series, okay? First of all, my sensei, uh, AZD, he is introducing this into his own practices. And also I'm doing this based on popular demand. A lot of people requested that I break down the Tao Te Ching. So let's get started. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao, okay? So when you speak about the Tao, you got to understand that you can't add identifications and labels on something that is so eternal and unchanging and forming constantly. So it escapes our intellectual conclusion. We can't be like, this is it, that's the Tao. Understand the Tao is this way, this intuitive insight, this feeling, this beingness. And we've got to go away from all conditioning, right? All the labels and layers and, you know, identification and storylines and beliefs and all this stuff and just go back to the core truth, pure, understanding of the law of nature. What do we call this thing? As Lao Tzu or old master says, it's a name that cannot be named, okay? What's the first rule of Fight Club? You can't talk about it, okay? And here I am talking about it, dissecting it, breaking it down intellectually, right? Analytically understanding it. This is my own interpretation. Of course, take it with a grain of salt. Make your own conclusions about this and understandings about this. But again, start to understand this is a journey of insight. Grab yourself a copy of the Tao Te Ching, as well as break it down in your own 
perspective. I'm just giving you some of these formulas that are coming from me. A DAO is almost like a return. It's like hitting the rewind button, right? Going back to source. I don't wanna water down the DAO or limit it or define it in some way. To leave it unnamed is the best way because once we put a label on something, we make it real. And this is a mystery to us. This is unknown, right? It's the gate to all mystery. It's like trying to describe a friend to another friend, right? You go, hey, he's kind of lively, right? He's a uh, long hair, you know, he's kind of a really, uh, he's a good dude. It's like, dude, you're describing so many people, right? How do we get to this one guy? But you can't really break them down because they are who they are so unique to themselves. Yes, they're lively, but what about the times where they're not lively? Does that change their identity in some way? Identification is really, we start to add boundaries and barriers around things. This is what desire does. And so it says, ever desireless, one can see the mystery. Ever desiring, one can see the manifestations. He's not necessarily saying to take away all desire, like a lot of spiritual uh, practices and ideologies do, right? They tell you to, you know, amputate all desire, okay? Get rid of it. No, he's saying the complementary desire and desirelessness, okay? No thingness, nothingness. This first verse is teaching you not to categorize things and label things and look at things so logically and rationally all the time, right? It doesn't, it's not going to help you in your life. Trees aren't really part of the earth, but then also you could say they're part of the earth. If we're following the Vedantic angle, we're thinking of this underlying substrate as Brahman. There's this portion of the Upanishads that says, if you do not know the Brahman, you know the Brahman. If you know the Brahman, you do not know the Brahman, right? So this is kind of the mystery or the elusiveness or the ambiguity that, that leads us into understanding. It's almost looking at cosmogony, right? It's like the beginning of the universe. So a lot of scientists will equate this as the origin point, right? of everything. Some people gave it the name the Big Bang, but the thing about it is that even in the Big Bang, like it didn't just happen. It wasn't like point A to point B, because if you focus on A, you're missing out on B. And if you're focusing on B, you're missing out on A. So look at it, embrace it as this process, this way. It's a natural law. As we start letting go more, as we start embracing this uwe or this action of inaction or no thingness, we tap in to that spirit of the Tao. The named is the mother of 10,000 things. So this is like saying like, let's say, you know, the 10,000 the, the 10, things can be, you know, materials. It can be like your ideas, your concepts, your experiences, all this kind of stuff. They add filters over the natural, over what is already pure and is already there. Right? So the more conditioning you add on to it, the more confused you're going to get. The Tao is, the, is an unlayering process. It's an unlearning of all the stuff that doesn't truly belong. It's, it's becoming the uncarved block, in a sense. Right? It's going back to origin, back to source. This is the way of inner work. You know, just because someone's practicing Tai Chi, it doesn't make them, you know, a Taoist. If they have an intuitive insight of the Tao, that is truly what is going to help them. Where's the presence of this structure or this way in your own beingness? Have you noticed that times where you get out of your own way that you actually start progressing forward? The Tao is very counterculture. And the idea in culture is to perform better, to get to the top, to excel. A lot of people don't look into this work because it doesn't really say that. What it states is we've got to embrace our feminine energy in a sense, okay? We got to come back to neutrality essentially. So the Tao doesn't believe in like one or the other, right? Two extremes. It believes in a maintenance of almost a sine curve where you start to understand that there is this flow to the universe. There is this path. Desire, desirelessness. Desire, desirelessness. We can do this with anything, right? Two concepts, two contrasts, the yin and the yang, yin and the yang, yin and the yang, or yang and the yin, yang and the yin, right? Once we come back to that neutrality, we surf this sine curve, 
we are starting to understand this more. So you don't want to get caught upstream or downstream in a sense with the Tao. It's like how Bruce Lee says, you know, finger pointing at the moon. Don't miss all the heavenly glory, man. Okay. Don't miss all the heavenly glory. The Tao is all of that heavenly glory. So when you're trying to identify it, when you're trying to be like, oh, this is what it is. You miss out on all the Tao that is within you and around you. It's a blend of nothingness and beingness, if that makes sense. Okay. So the intellect and the ego creates more blockages. I know I'm going to butcher this, but this pichikai lai, right? This understanding of if something bad happens, something good is around the corner. And if something good happens, something bad is around the corner. It's like the law of polarity almost uh, in the hermetic principles, if you understand this. Darkness within darkness, okay? There are layers of this thing. And if we zoom in on one of the layers and be like, this is it. Nope, there's, guess what? There's another layer. It's unfolding. Darkness is also dark matter. Dark matter is most of the universe. Darkness is the void. No thingness, nothingness. It's not necessarily saying that this world is dark. No, that's not what it's saying. Uh, you've got to look deeper within this understanding. I mean, in this copy of this, the, this version that I have, you're without desire, you look into the transcendent or the mysteries. You understand the subtlety of the universe. Like, let's say you're going for a jog and your goal is to get to the park. I, I have to get to the park. I have to get to the park, right? You're missing out on all that heavenly glory. Maybe there's some insect that you say hello to or a little bird that comes by and you stop and smell the roses. You cherish the moment. You enjoy the moment, but you're also distant from it, meaning you're not wrapped up in it. You're not attached to the moment. You're not trying to define the moment and take pictures and analyze it and put it into a lab. No, you're experiencing it. Don't impose things onto reality. Reality is what reality is. It is what it is. That's the Tao, right? It is what it is. It's just nature. A lack of desire gets us to see the essence of the Tao. Desire gets us to see the Tao's manifestations, which means that everything that you see is a byproduct of this Tao. It's manifested. So it's the manifested with the unmanifested. The potential that's ready to be uncoiled. So the gate to all mysteries is this combination of this duality, this, this embracing of this oneness of duality, right? It's not one or the other. It's a complementary. It is one symbol. The Tao can be seen as how one arrives at enlightenment. It's not that the Tao is the cause of enlightenment. The Tao is enlightenment itself. The process is enlightenment. So this moving spontaneous intelligence that we can't really pinpoint is the nature of reality. When you practice the Tao, you become free and easy wandering. You don't become trapped by constraints or dogma or conditioning. You get confused in life when you start to label things outside of yourself. And this is an internal process. That's the best way to sum it up, man. This is an inner work process. That was also detachment from any kind of outcome or result, right? And the funny thing is that will get us the result in a sense as well. So this unchanging, right? It, so it never changes. This was before the categorizations of time and space. You see, nature has no beginning or end. You can't be like, that's exactly when the flower uh, started to bloom and- the seed at 1245, and then once we, you know, start to scientifically analyze this now- well, Scientists love the Tao because it actually goes with nature, right? It's not against nature. So natural law, I mean, natural scientists were called philosophers back in the day, right? So it's important to understand that, you know, we give the Tao meaning by living through it, standing it and having this context of the Tao itself really preserves the poetry that is this work. The gods write in verse, right? Um, Lao Tzu, the old master, was a very, very wise man. So I almost imagine him being like, you know, sitting down really wise and, and then have someone asking him questions, almost like, you know, how the Bhagavad Gita has questioning. It's all the art of questioning, right? A lot, a lot of these sacred texts. So if you're labeling it and calling it something like the coolest method in the world, 
towards enlightenment, you're taking away so much. You're missing so much. Oh, you can overwhelm yourself with thousands of things, a myriad of things. This essential movement, this unchanging movement, right? That keeps the universe moving forward. It's, it can be felt through certain moments. I think the closer that we get towards being in nature, we'll start to understand a world free from all kinds of conditioning. I remember when I took a trip to the jungle, I got to experience the Tao in being just around nature. A lot of the cautiousness that I understood was my own conditioning and my own mind scaring me. Like, oh, there's gonna be animals here and all this kind of stuff, right? Instead of getting wrapped up in your own mind, the nameless origin of everything is here. And it's where all that good shit comes from. You know what I mean? Like, hey, everything comes from the Tao. It's all here. But if we start to study the manifestations, we don't study the source. We don't get to the origin point. We don't get to the root. So it's interesting how we begin with this origin of this essence, of this path, of this process. We can only get closer to it by understanding our own nature and the nature of unchanging reality. So I hope this helps you out today. I'll be continuing with this series with verse two. Have an amazing day. May the flow be with you. May the Tao be with you. On Tao, I say, instead of on God, right? May the flow be with you and stay legendary. Let's get it today. Upward spiral gang. Boom.